real estate investment trusts have done generally well, a good number have performed greatly, and despite the situation in the market, they have delivered on promises. And that's the reason why moving forward, all of us will have to look at this and see if it fits our portfolio. Hello mga ka-RFF, I hope you're all doing well. Again, let me thank you for continuing to patronize our channel. Let me thank you for continuously engaging with us. And we don't really have so much of an option. Many of you have asked for this rate review. A review of the existing real estate investment trusts in the country. Totoo po yan. This is a new class of stocks that have been in the market for as little as a year and a half. In fact, below a year and a half. Kasi yung pinakamatanda po dito, one year and five months pa lang. But they have taken the market by storm. The performance of these stocks have really been quite astonishing. A little over what is expected. And as we began to understand them, investors somehow, you know, had a better appreciation of what to expect and certainly the kind of investment commitment that went through them has actually increased over time. So, ito po yung sinasabi kong promise na review ng Real Estate Investment Trust. As I've said, as of now po, there are five REITs in the market today from the very first launch in 2020 tayo po ay nakapag-list na ng additional na apat so lima na po ang real estate investment trust and while i say that performance across majority of these REITs have been good certainly may laggards pa din po as in any market i think over and above just a simple review of the performance of the existing REITs, kailangan po balikan din natin ano ba yung mga factors na nagda-drive ng REIT investment performance. Now, for those of you who've watched my video on a REIT, siguro po matatandaan nyo itong factors na ito. For those who haven't watched it, it might be a little dated because I came up with that video right after two trading days of a REIT, bumagsak po on two trading days and it was a weekend after that and I said, you know, I really have to come up with a video because people don't understand what REITs are all about and I tried to clarify it. Bago ko po gawin itong review ito, gusto kong i-review din natin yung mga sinabi kong factors doon because these are very important things to remember especially as you're considering investing into this new type of investments within the stock market. So, ano pa itong REIT performance drivers na ito? Siyempre, number one is not about the investment itself. It's something that's internal to all of us. Ang factor na ito is the most important as far as I'm concerned. And it is how an investment matches your objective. So, it's more about us, what our objectives are in investing. Pag match po ang isang instrument sa ating objective, then it's going to be perfect for us. So, ano ba talaga ang hinahanap dapat ng isang investor sa real estate investment trust? Unang-una po dyan, stable cash flows. Dahil, di ba, 90% of the earnings of a REIT has to be, and that's required by law, has to be distributed regularly. So, ang ina-expect dapat ng isang investor is a stable cash flow, a dividend yield that's hopefully better than market. Now, sasabihin na naman ng iba, eh, yung yield ng ibang stocks nga, mas mataas pa dyan eh. Remember, the reason why we go for a REIT is because of the stable yield. And there is a big, big emphasis on the word stable. Kasi unlike other businesses na depende sa takbo ng negosyo nila, REITs would somehow be a little more stable because upa yan eh, rental yan. Normally, lahat 
naka long term contract at hindi naman sabay-sabay matatapos ang contract na yan. So somehow medyo dapat mas predictable ang cash flows and dividends ng mga REIT. The other one is a reliable inflation hedge. Siyempre ang property ng REITs normally building. Some of them have land, real estate in general. So obviously in a time of runaway inflation, real assets, hard assets are good inflation hedges kasi umaakyat ang value nila as inflation goes higher. So with a bit of an inflation hedge and a stable cash flow, we will expect REITs to have a little bit of appreciation, not much, a little bit. So wala pong expectation dito na doblihan, triplihan. Okay? A little bit of an increase in terms of capital appreciation but ang importante po talaga, dapat po ang hinahanap talaga ng investor yung stable cash flows coming out of dividend distributions. Next factor that's important, ito na po, siguro na sa mga kumpanya na nagpapatakbo ng REIT. There has to be management expertise. Because sinasabi natin, di ba, ang mga REIT para yung mutual funds ng real estate. Ang manager ng mutual fund, kumukuha ng pera from investors at ini-invest sa iba't ibang marketable securities. Ang REIT manager, kakaiba. Kasi kinukover niya is a whole spectrum of professional expertise. Number one is fund management. Dapat marunong siyang mag-handle ng kapital ng REIT so that the REIT can grow, the REIT can be efficient, and the REIT can increase its kind of earning velocity for its investors. Number two, that's to be expertise on property management. Hindi lang para maging maayos ang property, hindi lang para tumagal ang building, para ito ay makakuha rin ng magandang rental rate. Because if a property is well-maintained and it withstands the test of time, syempre po ang renta niyan maganda pa din over time at nag escalate So kailangan property management at a higher level. And lastly, and most importantly, business management. Business management po yan kasi kailangan yung property developers la sponsor, kailangan marunong magpatakbo ng property business. Remember, ang mga nag sa REIT, gustong mag-invest sa property pero maaring walang kakayanan, walang kapital, bumili ng kanilang mga rental properties like condos and offices, pabakas na lang sila dun sa REIT. Pero syempre, pagbakas nila sa REIT, dapat may mamahala ng bilyong-bilyong negosyo na nakapalibot dun sa mga properties na yun. So, property developers will have to push, as mentioned, a bit of efficiency. They have to look at economies of scale. They have to look at the right management of the business to make sure that it's not only just going to be sustainable, it's going to be a growing proposition for investors. Another driver for performance is the quality of the properties and the tenant mix. Alam nyo naman po, pandemic pa tayo ngayon. So, karamihan ng inilagay na properties sa REITs are offices. Siyempre, hindi pa kumikita ang mga mall ngayon. Ang mga mall ngayon, lugi. You know, in many other countries, nagumpisa na sila ng REIT matagal na. So, wala pang covid yung mga REIT nila nagumpisa na at part of these REITs are mall properties, retail properties because they've been doing great business before the pandemic. But because tayo po nagumpisa ang ating REIT industry at the time of the pandemic, syempre ang nilagay muna ng mga property developers yung sure ball, sure fire businesses. And these are offices least affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. So ang quality po niyan in terms of utilization, dapat maganda for the properties to account for a good stream of income. Pero dapat, ang mga umuupa, good quality din. Ang mga nakakalamang po, syempre yung pinaka-stable businesses, hindi masyadong naapektuhan ng pandemic and continuous pa rin ang growth like BPOs, like the regular businesses that are in finance, in industries and services that continue to grow amidst the pandemic. 
And syempre, at the bottom of it all would be earnings and dividend distribution. Pag napapalaki po ng isang REIT company ang kanyang earnings at dividend distribution, syempre mas maraming investor ang gustong bumili ng shares at kahit tumaas ang shares in terms of price, they will also go for it because market din naman ang actual dividend distribution. So dapat na maintain niya yung yield expectation. Syempre po, ha, remember, when prices of REITs go up, they made you challenge yung iyong dividend distribution because pag napaku po yan, ibig sabihin yung yield mo bababa pag umaakit yung price. For the REITs that continue to grow their income, their base of business, and there would be stability in that growth expectation, makakaasa po kayo that the stock prices of these REITs will not just be maintained, they will go a little bit higher. I am purposely holding back on two performance drivers that are very important, pero i reserve ko yun mamaya dahil doon yung makikita. They could have been the reasons why there has been a variety in terms of performance a level of variability in terms of performance within the five breeds we have in the country today. But now we go for that review. Again, a disclosure. Para dun sa hindi pa po nakakaalam, I am an independent director of Ayala Land. So, maaaring masasabi natin, associated ako sa ARIC, but I will not divulge anything here that is not public knowledge. Public knowledge and information po ang lahat na pinag-uusapan natin dito. Yun nga lang, alam ko, tamad namang mag-research ang marami sa inyo, kaya iniintay nyo na lang ang Rumber Financials at ang isang Rex Mendoza para mag-summarize nitong lahat para sa inyo. And we love doing this for you at makakaasa po kayo na gagawin namin ito well into the future. So again, let's focus on a read. Ano yung IPO listing date? August 13th? 2020. So, August 13, 2020, ano na siya? One year and five months. One year and five months na siya. IPO offer price, sabi ko kanina yan, 27. Ano po ang dividend rate ni a rate? 5 to 6 percent. Alam nyo po, tumaas ang dividend distribution ng a rate. It's just that Tumaas din po ang presyo niya. Kaya dyan naglalaro sa range na yan ang kanyang dividend rate. The price at the end of the year for 2021 was 48.60. 48.60. Hindi po ako nagbibiro. Up na siya ng 80% in one year and five months. Within the pandemic. Can you imagine? Sabi nila, delikado yung mga rate na yan. Eh, may pandemia tayo. Sabi, umakit po ng 80% in one year and five months. And on top of that 80%, which is practically just the appreciation, meron pa pong consistent na 5 to 6% dividend distribution na nakadagdag dyan. Every quarter, dinidistribute. So, maybe ang tanong ng marami, kumita ba kayo ng 80% sa portfolio nyo? Baka kung retire kayo, may at dito nyo na lang nilagay lahat ng pira nyo. Nagkaroon kayo cash flow at umakyat pa ng 80% ang inyong posisyon. Pero teka lang, sa mga nakinig doon sa video ko, nilabas ko yung video yun, bumagsak kang irit eh. Bumagsak kang irit, saan siya bumagsak? 24-10. So kung doon ka nakbili, nung nilabas ko yung video yun, ano dapat ang nangyari? Up ka ng 102%. In one year and five months, up ka ng higit sa doble. Haya, di ba? Parang maybe yung iba, eh, laki na sakit ang ulo ko. Dami kong pinag-aaral dito, ang dami kong binabantayan. Eh, irit pala, ganun kalaki ang naging yield. Tapos may cash flow pa. Mali yata yung ginagawa ng iba dyan, hindi ba? Again, uulitin ko po. Nothing beats diversification, nothing beats investing over the long term, and nothing beats investing for objectives. So, it's illogical to think that way. Pasasamain nyo lang ang loob nyo. Ang importante dito, nakita na natin na magandang position itong ARIT. So, maaaring well into the future, maybe, dapat yata mag-allocate tayo ng konti. Hindi lang maybe sa ARIT, baka mamaya sa iba pang RIT, 
na pag-uusapan natin. By January 10, 2022, umakyat pa po si Airy to 50 pesos. So, nagdagdagan pa ng 5%. So, yung kumikita ng 80, naging 85 na. Yung kumikita ng 102, 107 na. Can you imagine that? Ito po, walang halong biro. Kung hindi nyo nababantayan, tingnan nyo. At makikita nyo, a great combination of cash flows and capital appreciation is happening with a REIT. The next REIT that was launched in the country was DDMP REIT Inc. Double Dragon Meridian Place REIT Inc. It was IPO, then the listing date was March 24, 2021. So, nine months po siya. So, nagumpisa siya ng March 24, patapos yung third month of the year. So, nine months siya. Okay? Kung mapapansin nyo, yung aking pagpipresent, it's a matter of chronological order. Depende po kung kailan ni launch. So, after ARI, sumunod pong in-IPO ang DDMP. Unfortunately, I'll have to tell all of you that across all the five breeds, si DDMP lang po ang negative. Its IPO price was 2.25. And as of end of December 2021, ang presyo po niya ay 1.79 na lang. Down po ng 20.5% in 9 months. But as I say that, its dividend yield has been hovering around 5 to 6%. So dito nyo makikita, ibig sabihin, nung nag-umpisa yung taon, After na IPO siya, mababa yung dividendo niya. So doon niyo po makikita, maaaring correct ang presyo ng isang REIT to adjust its yield to something that the market desires. Which means, at a certain point, prices will have to go down for the yield rate to reach 5 to 6%. So pag napaakyat po yan ni DDMP, maaaring bumawi ang kanyang share price. You know, a lot of people would have been expecting DDMP to really do well kasi siya po, nagkaroon siya ng konting differentiation. Si ARIT, puro building ang property, hindi po kasama ang lupa. Si DDMP, kasama po ang lupa sa offering. Ibig sabihin, nilipat nila yung buong property, not just the building, but the land doon sa tinatawag na REIT company. So valuation-wise, it could have been okay. However, let me tell you, di ba? balikan natin yung kaninang quality of property and quality of tenants na pinag-usapan natin, maaari pong maraming nag-isip na ang kliyente ni DDMP, karamihan pogo. Alam nyo naman, nung bandang 2020, 2021, nagkaroon ng tinatawag na pogo exodus. Marami pong umalis sa Pilipinas. Lumipat ang mga pogo sa Cambodia. So, medyo may konting difficulty si DDMP sa larangang ito. But, As I can say, with their dividend distribution quite lately, covering at around 6%. So kailangan pataasin pa uli nila yan para siguro umakyat din ang kanilang share price. They will have to improve occupancy. They will have to show that their tenant mix is of a higher quality, not too much of pogos. And lastly, again, that dividend payout will have to increase. The third rate that was launched in the country is Phil REIT. That is the Phil Invest Land Real Estate Investment Trust. Ang kanyang IPO listing date, August 12, 2021. Ang offer price niya sa kanyang IPO was 7 pesos. Yung dividend rate, mas mataas ng bahagya, 5.5 to 6%. As of the end of December 2021, ang kanyang presyo ay 7.4. So it's already up 5.7% in four and a half months. Alam nyo po, yung Philippine Stock Exchange Index for the year 2021, lugi ng minus 0.2%. So, ibig sabihin, tinatalo nitong fill rate ang Philippine Stock Exchange Index kasi minus 0.2% ang index. Siya up ng 5.7% in barely four and a half months. So kahit paano, may performance din po itong si Phil Reed. As of January 
its prices gone up to 7.6. So, nadagdagan po yung kanyang capital appreciation. Up na siya ng 8.6% in 5 months of being listed in our exchange. The fourth tree is Robinson's Land Commercial REIT. Ang ticker po niyan is RCR. Its IPO listing date was September 14, 2021. Ang offer price niya nung nilist siya, 6.45. Much like all the other REITs I've mentioned, ang dividend rate niya hovering at around 5 to 6%. As of end of the year last year, 12 31 2021, ang kanyang presyo, 7.61. Or a yield of 18% in three and a half months. Isipin nyo, nag-yield ng 18% in three and a half months. At hindi pa po ako tapos. January 10, 2022, ang presyo niya, 8.18 na. In four months, plus 27%. Nako siguro, marami na namang mag-iisip at manghihinaya. Ba't pala, lahat ng portfolio ko, dito ko na lang nilagay. Di ba? Ang pa ako ng 27%, tumubo pa ako nung dividend payout. Again, ulitin ko po, yan ay tinatawag nating wishful thinking. Ang labanan po dito, dapat asset allocation. Maglagay tayo ng konti sa mga tamang stocks na naiisip natin na magbibigay ng steady appreciation steady cash flow. Meron din tayong portion na maaring growth oriented. Meron tayong portion na iba naman ng objective. But overall, package together so that we get to fulfill long-term dreams. So wag po tayo mag-isip ng ganun. Pero I'm so sure, nangihinayang ang marami sa inyo. Last but not least, last but not least, is MREIT or the Mega World Real Estate Investment Trust. The Mega World Corporation's REIT. IPO listing date, pinakahuli, October 1, 2021. So, eksaktong-eksakto, one quarter na lang sila nung 2021. October 1 till the end of the year. IPO price, listing at 16.1. 16 pesos and 10 centavos. Dividend rate, 5 to 6 percent. Then, ano po ang presyo pagdating ng end of the year? 1970. 19 pesos 70 cents. Up ng 22 percent in only three months. So kung makikita nyo, aside from DDMP, four out of five doing very well. Some better than others. But the thing is, they're all respectable performances. Kahit naman po si DDMP, hawakan nyo lang as they pay the dividends, obviously, over time, makakabawi din kayo. Pero syempre, again, wala pong halong sisihan. Syempre, we could have other options for that REIT position. So if you remember, sabi ko kanina, may dalawa akong factors, dalawang performance drivers na inire-reserva for a later part of the discussion. Ito na po ngayon yun. Ano ba yung dalawang factors na yun? This is the second to the last, but one of the most important factors. It is an improvement of total return or the capability to improve total return because of accretive growth. Ano yung tinatawag na accretive growth? Kasi alam nyo po, ang isang REIT has the capability for continuous asset acquisition. Hindi po static ang isang REIT. Over time, medyo pwede pong magdagdag ang property developer ng iba't iba nilang building at iba't iba nilang property sa REIT na ito. And that's exactly what these companies are doing. Si Ayala Land po, di ba? Pagkatapos na pagkatapos pa lang ng listing, bumili pa sila ng dalawang building at inilagay nila yan. Meron pang building na galing sa Cebu. Tapos after that, umutang pa sila ng pera Meron silang biniling lupa sa Laguna Techno Park. Meron silang dinagdag na ibang building, yung offices dun sa the 30th sa Ortigas. Yun, diba? Meron pang tinatawag na asset swap. So ito, accretive power na ito nang gagaling sa dalawang bagay. They can be driven by one, leverage. The REIT can borrow 
to expand its asset holdings. So, ang REIT pwedeng umutang to buy new buildings para mailipat ng developer ang banyang properties dun sa REIT. With a tax benefit, logical na logical. Alam nyo ba, ang REIT because of the law, but exempt. Hindi sila nagbabayad pag bumibili sila ng property. Abay, talo pa nila tayo. As individuals, when we buy properties, we pay back. Ang REIT po, dahil nga eh, this is a chance to share tidings with the retail marketplace, with smaller investors. in po yan. Pati DST, 50% discount. So this growth and future acquisitions are actually being encouraged. And on top of On top of borrowing, pwede pang magkaroon ng property for share swap. So, ibig sabihin, a property developer like Robinsons or Megaworld can actually inject assets to the REIT. At imbes na bayaran sila ng REIT company, bibigyan sila ng shares. So, yung mga future properties na yon, pwedeng magpalago ng earnings ng isang REIT. Pag-hati-hatihan ng lahat, hindi lang ng property developer na nakakuha ng shares, pati na yung mga minority at small retail shareholders who were part of the REIT in the first place. So as I say, this factor, baka po isa sa pinakamabibigat na driver ay ang portfolio ng property developer sponsor ng REIT. Alam naman natin si Ayala lang. Marami pang property pwedeng isaksak kay Erit. Obviously, pinakamalaki na yung inumpisahan ni Robinson's Land. Pero marami pa rin silang ibang property na pwede pang i-absorb ng RCR. And also, MRIC. Di ba? So, even Make World still has other properties that it can tuck into MRIC. So, what am I saying? Baka ito din yung medyo may issue kay DDMP kasi wala pa naman siyang ganung kalaking portfolio of commercial properties and maybe hindi nga magandang mall ngayon ang i-inject sa REITs no so ang mitamang dito yung marami pang tinatawag na office properties office and commercial properties that can be injected into the REIT that's why itong mga presyong ito itong mga price appreciation na to can actually be heavily anchored on the future of what a property developer slash sponsor can do for the REIT. The last factor, that's again, very important. Okay? One of the most important. I left it for last, but it can matter over the long term. And it's the power of branding. Siyempre po, isipin natin, pag tayo ay investor, sino bang gusto mong partner? Alam nyo, pag bumibili tayo ng REIT, para tayong puma-partner dun sa property developer na nagpapatakbo ng REIT na yon. So when you're with a REIT, you're actually partnering with Ayala Land. When you're with DDMP, you're partnering with Double Dragon. When you're with Phil REIT, you're partnering with Phil Invest. When you're with RCR, you're actually partnering with Robinson's Land. And last but not least, if you're with m you're partnering with Mega World. So, if these brands, their management, their products have actually been stable, renowned, and respected within the industry, malayo po ang mararating din ng mga REIT na yun. So, very important na tingnan natin ang pinapartneran natin kasi quality-wise, they will have an impact on future value. Branding will have its way of making an impact in terms of market preference, in terms of lease contract stipulations and provisions. It will also have an effect on escalation clauses and stuff like that. Overall po, malaking bagay talaga yung tinatawag na tiwala ng publiko sa isang kumpanya. Trust will drive the public's patronage of products and services of these institutions. Alam nyo po, at this point, I'd really like to be able to share this with you. Not that it's totally connected and relevant. Alam nyo naman, again, disclosure, I am a director of Ayala Land. Alam naman po natin na hindi natin matatawaran ang reliability 
trust and commitment that the Ayala Land brand has. Hindi po natin matatawaran ang binibigay na tiwala at patronage ng Philippine public sa mga produkto at serbisyo ni Ayala Land. Its performance is captured on a neat track record. A track record that has been there established well over time. And I can tell you that other players somehow would have exhibited this as well. Alam nyo, pinakamahirap ngayon in many of our businesses to actually care for and nurture partners. Again, another disclosure po, I am connected with Blue Leaf, the number one events place in this country. Siyempre, itong pandemyang ito, napakalaking dagok nito sa Blue Leaf. Siyempre, walang lumalabas. Walang celebration of milestones, weddings, and different occasions. So, siyempre, hirap yung negosyo. I can tell you, the relationship is different. Blue Leaf is the tenant, and Mega World and Robinson's Land are the landlords. Alam nyo, nakakagulat din at this time, yung mga kumpanyang yan, how they nurture partners. Alam nyo, unang-una, they were very, very supportive. They were very, very nurturing. Gusto nila makasurvive lahat. And this is something that will add on to their branding over time. The relationships they nurture with counterparties, with customers, and the public in general. Pasok po yan sa branding and that's the reason why I can say they're all also being blessed with this kind of a performance. It's because of their nurture in nature and I tip my hat to them for acting and behaving like this. Kasi alam nyo po, Merong isang property si Blue Leaf, wala na. Alam nyo naman, dahil hindi man lang siya nabigyan ng discount at medyo nasasakal siya at napipilitang magbayad even at a time when it doesn't have any revenues. Maybe the landlord for that property has a very different you know, situation. Maybe they're probably not as well prepared as, as Robinson's Land and Mega World, Or maybe they have different business values. I cannot really say what reason there would be. All I can say is this, that it is Mega World and Robinsons that would have shown, you know, their empathy for their partners. And they were the ones who have shown the value that they put on relationships. You know, after this pandemic is over, I am so sure Blue Leaf will bounce back and will bring back honor and business to these two other brands. And I'm sure over time, they will be continuously blessed as they are now building up their own long-term track record in this industry. Alam nyo po, this is going to be a very, very exciting type of investment. We have five. Pero alam nyo ba, naririnig nyo na ba? May padating na mga bagong REITs, City Core, meron ding W Group. At pag ito, medyo humupa-hupa itong pandemic na ito. Abay, may sleeping giant dyan, yung SM Group. And if, much like other countries, real estate investment trusts would benefit from tucking in malls and retail properties into their arsenal, aba, isa po sila sa pinakamalaki, if not the biggest. Again, we all look forward to that. All I can say in summary is that real estate investment trusts have done generally well, a good number, have performed greatly, and despite the situation in the market, they have delivered on promises. And that's the reason why moving forward, all of us will have to look at this and see if it fits our portfolios. If you are interested and you'd really want to start investing in REITs at wala pa kayong accounts, wala pa kayong online accounts, we will be putting a link here that you can tap so that you can apply to have one of the best platforms, digital stock investment platforms that we have in the country today, MyTrade. Okay? So matutulungan po namin kayo, i-click nyo yung link na yan so that you can open your account and start investing in stocks and in REITs altogether. Again, 
This is Rex Mendoza. I hope that this video has been helpful for many of you. We look forward to seeing more of you in our future videos. Until then, stay safe, take care, and blessings always.